Hello, welcome to another video. So today we will take a look at the controversial Milo Yiannopoulos' best moments. So here we can see Yiannopoulos is giving what seems to be a speech and he gets told he's a white supremacist. He got very mad at the fact he was getting called a white supremacist. You should also go and listen to feminists and you should go and listen to Black Lives Matter activists and you should work out who you like the best at the end of it. Now the problem is um, you're listening to bad sources because you come here and you have sort of under your breath almost, not as loudly as you said anything else, but under your breath you sort of said all oh, white supremacists, blah, blah, blah. You kind of wanted to get it under the radar, you wanted to say it without me having an opportunity to, to, to dispute it. F*** you. How f***ing dare you call me a white supremacist? <laughs> The second part is where his response stands out, and this is where it gets... Just listen for yourself. The crowd and the moderator laughed, and the man asking him questions was left speechless. In this clip, Milo is in an interview on the all-too-famous Channel 4. He gets asked what he believes alt-right means. He responds by saying that he's not part of them, but instead just lets them have a voice. Vibrant, exciting new movement of conservatives in America. They are populists, they're nationalists, which is not a dirty word in America. Uh, they care about immigration, they care about trade, and they really hate political correctness. And you would describe yourself as one of those sort of cheerleaders? Of no, people. the media is, is desperate to crown me the queen of it. All I've ever done as a reporter is give them a fair hearing, give them a fair crack of the whip in the press. As the interview progresses, he gives his opinion on American politics and how he and the company he works at stand in regards to the comments that have been said about the company. His response left his position in the company very clear. A lot of Brits don't always understand is how ugly and uh, terrifying American politics can be. The name calling can be absolutely extraordinary. And, and lots of Brits. And name calling don't... by Breitbart. I mean, that is ugly. No, Look no, at these no. headlines. Well, no, Would asking... you rather your child had feminism or cancer? Well, that's not stupid. There's that's no mine. hiring <laughs> bias against women in tech. They just suck at interviews. That's, that's also... extreme. That's ugly. No, isn't it's it? not extreme. They're my headlines. They're not Steve's. Um... Here you will see Milo Yiannopoulos replying in an interview with ABC News. And his responses were unique. He leaves his points of view very clear. He doesn't deny being an internet troll and takes pride in it. That celebrities are these fragile wallflowers? Give me a break. You and I both know people in Hollywood. The because she acted in a movie, Hollywood you rallied people. Are sitting at home crying into their iPhones. Why didn't you stand up as people called her ape, gorilla, and worse and say, guys, this is good to why do, but to not racist. Other people, not ra why should I have to police other people's stand up for right? I'm responsible why not stand up for the right? I'm responsible for what I say. I'm perfectly happy to tell you well, I think that stuff is disgusting. So you had I'm no perfectly obligation happy to for your 350,000 followers. He defends why he did it and how he has the right to say whatever he wants. He continues to say how he is only responsible for himself and not for what his fans and others say. Then he says this. Somebody's body? Yeah. To denigrate their ideas? Absol that, what absolutely. grade are you in? Abs Seriously. No, 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 no. Are you a 13-year-old No, 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 no. Absolutely I will, and I'll tell you why. Because, because, because somebody body, doesn't body have positive. a weight that you it's think is, it is proper? So That's revolting. No, it's not revolting. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I'll tell you what's revolting. What's revolting is the body positivity movement. What's revolting is this, is this idea now that you can tell women that they'll be healthy at any size. Why? Because it tells women that you can be fat and you can be unattractive and you'll be happy anyway. That's a lie. In this clip, Yiannopoulos seems to be in an interview or debate of some kind. The topic of the debate is sexism in science. As the woman finishes her statement, he gives some information to dismiss it. In particular, from a female scientist, but the fact is that there, are, there is some reason to suppose that, some, that, uh, that, there, that there is an advantage to being a man in certain subjects. There's reason to suppose that gender essentialism, biological determinism, whatever you want to call it, the fact that there are male brains and female brains, may indeed have some basis in science. Now, this is sort of thrown out of the window completely by, by feminists and female academics who just refuse to accept that there, there's any reason whatsoever why there might be a gender imbalance. Two things on that. One, actually the science is very much still out on that. And two, if you look at equality in society, if you look, for example, at Bangladesh versus Norway, what you notice is the number of women in science and technology subjects actually goes down as societies get more equal because women simply don't make the same choices that people... As you saw, he quickly dismissed her opinion on the fact that women are told and have been told for thousands of years that they cannot work in STEM fields. In this second part, Milo Yiannopoulos is telling the mediator in the debate how being gay gives him advantages and how women are no longer in the disadvantageous position they were in. Is it different for gay men and lesbian women? Well, it's brilliant being a gay man because you can get away with murder. You can do anything. I mean, there's the one respect in which identity politics is brilliant. You know, um, as, a, as a gay man or a lesbian, you can basically get away with murder. You can be bitchy, you can be sarcastic, you can be rude and abusive, and you can do whatever, whatever the hell you like, and nobody complains. Women, I think, really, you know, 
until very recently, until possibly the last half decade, it was certainly true that women had all kinds of structural disadvantages in society. That simply isn't true anymore. Um, it's not true, for example, when women go for, for jobs in, in science, technology and uh, mathematics. You know, a study came out, I think, two or three weeks ago in the US saying that women have a two-to-one advantage over men with the same qualifications because everyone's so desperate to hire women. In this final clip, we can see Milo explain why he acts, speaks, and addresses different subjects the way he does. He explains how he's hard to categorize and why people dislike and criticize him. Speech activist, so sometimes I say outrageous and controversial things. Sometimes I'm a jokester and a trickster and a Loki-esque figure. Um, the political left, the you know the the feminists and the social justice warriors and the you know leftist journalists don't like me very much and call me a variety of names because they find me difficult to categorize. They don't understand how a gay guy could have these opinions or or, or whatever. I don't fit really fit into any box, so I represent sort of a, a threat to them because I'm persuasive and charismatic and have a huge fan base. Oh, um, very, they just really don't know how to deal modest. with. Me. As he continues, one of the interviewers tells him she is a feminist and explains to him why she and many others don't like him. She explained how he is disliked because he stirs up hate for the fun of it. I don't think it's fair to say I stir up hate. I mean, most people would admit, I think, if they're, if they're being fair and reasonable, it's very difficult to describe yourself as not a feminist if you're in public life. And that's an enforcement of a particular political orthodoxy that is not shared by the majority of the public. I mean, very few women describe themselves as feminists. Fewer than one in five in America, just 7% in England. I'm sure the numbers for Australia, being a very sensitive, uh, very sensible country, are about the same. You know, these the, the ideas that are being enforced in popular culture and on TV are not views reflected in the public. And the gap between the media and people at home is growing all the time. That's my insight and that's what I, I seek to expose and ridicule and have fun with. So there you go, Milo Yiannopoulos' top five moments. Be sure to comment which one you thought was the best. Please do us a massive favor and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss our next video. See ya.